Hello there. I hope you're doing well today. So this video topic is going to be about why you should not give advice to a man unless he specifically requests it or asks for it regarding his penis size insecurities and how to overcome them. Unless he specifically requests it and wants it from you. Because depending on how a man is wired, there's many men in the world who, if they hear things like you need to just man up or just embrace yourself or just accept yourself for who you are and stuff like this, these things can actually cause the man to feel worse and more uh, distraught emotionally and mentally than otherwise, than if nothing was mentioned at all in that regards, depending on how the man is wired. Now, there's certain men who do respond positively to those kinds of things. So for those types of men, that those types of statements are functionally useful and helpful. But there's many men who do not respond well to those things and who the way their brain physiology is wired is that they, they just want to be heard out for what they actually feel. And that's it. They, they don't want advice. They don't want these recommendations because they're vividly aware already of the tropes of just embrace yourself, just accept yourself, just embrace your masculinity in, in all these ways and stuff like that, that they're aware of that already, but they notice that it's insufficient for them mentally, emotionally, and physiologically. Why? Because they, of their own accord, independently of pornography and women approval and all this stuff, independently of those things, just personally desire a longer, thicker penis that they're denied physiologically due to this world being the nightmare hellscape that it is. And so the fact that they can't decide which length and thickness they personally have, that's what's bothering them. It's not that it's only induced by pornography or women or men or whatever. It's yeah. Those things more often than not don't help. And they make the situation worse for men already suffering like that. Yes, no doubt about it. But those are not the reasons why a man feels insecure about these things. They're just not, you know, or rather this type of a man. Those are not the reasons why this type of a man is insecure about his size. Because there may well be men who don't watch pornography or men who um, are not being hounded like this by women or whatever, but they're still just individually, inter personally, they're um, having this issue with it, right? <clears throat> so in those cases, telling a man to embrace themselves and just, you know, man up and, and accept who they are and all these types of things, it's it adds insult to injury because you're telling them to do something mentally or emotionally they're not able to do because of how they're wired as a person. You're telling them to literally be someone else other than who they are in that case. And I know it's well-meaning when people say this, that their intention is to encourage the guy and to uplift him and stuff, but that intention can often backfire in these, in the case of these particular men, because um, they know your intention is well-meaning also, but that's irrelevant. It, it doesn't mean it's not going to emotionally backfire on them when they hear it and process it. Because, um, because basically what's going on is, instead of them, them being just fully 100% validated and acknowledged that they have a very legitimate, uh, good, or they, they have a very legitimate, solid reason why they feel, if that's what they feel about their size, the, the, the fact that they want a, a longer penis and a thicker one, and that is what they're desiring, is a very valid desire, basically. Let's put it that way, right? So they're wanting people just to acknowledge that that is a valid desire that they have. It's not that they're wanting to be told that desire itself isn't valid or that preference for your body isn't valid or it means you're, they're weak or it means they're not accepting of them. So that, that's not what they're wanting to hear because, um, and in their case, that's not going to be what helps them either. In fact, if anything's going to help them, it's going to be genuinely just being heard out and validated that, Hey, yes, this desire is legitimate and valid if you actually want this. And this is what you're specifically desiring for your body or physiology, you know, and just have it validated by other people. That actual desire you have is valid. It's and without people automatically assuming, oh, it's because of porn or it's because of women's approval and stuff like this, that it's that it's getting to your head or whatever. But <clears throat> that's an assumption. That's not necessarily the case. You know, and I would say in most cases, in many cases, that contributes to the issue. Sure. 
There's no doubt about that. There's no question. But there's no one-to-one correlation directly between pornography and women doing that to this insecurity. People like to act like there is, but I'm like, something being an, an additional element that makes something worse isn't isn't the the cause, capital T-H-E, of the issue itself being there. It's just a, something that eggs it on or perpetuates it, but it's not like the source of it, basically, okay? And I really hope people understand this with, with this, all right? Uh, and stop jumping to this, because at a certain level, it's very insulting to the man who's experiencing life this way, because it's being claimed to him that, oh, it's because of porn or it's because of women doing this that you're feeling this way, when in fact, that may not actually be his case at all in his individual situation. It may be a direct issue he personally has always been tormented by, completely independent of those two things, okay? And pl- so please keep this fact in mind. So you can see what I mean here, how a man who is experiencing it this way um, would process it completely differently. And really, only the the only men who are able to respond positively to, in a genuine sense, to just embrace yourself, embrace your masculinity, accept yourself for who you are and all these other types of things. And more specifically, embrace your body for what it is, et cetera. The only men who are able to respond positively to that in most cases are men who already have what they consider a decent enough endowment. And they're kind of on the cusp marginally of being considered small or not. So kind of teeter tottering, right? And so that just kind of tilts the balance in the, in the direction of positivity and optimism versus not for the most part, but men who were genuinely who consider themselves to be on the smaller side and, and would be considered that by others, men who are not able to contact the back walls of orifices, etc. cetera. Um, men in this situation, uh, it's not, it's not anywhere near going to have as much of a, of an uplifting or inspirational effect, unless they're a certain type of man in their psychology. Okay. And it's, it's interesting because no matter how much I talk about these points, it's like people always keep repeating the just accept yourself, just embrace yourself. And, and that's all good and dandy. But what I'm telling people is make sure that the type of man you're interacting with wants to hear those kinds of things first, before you just say it, or before you just uh, repeat those tropes to them, because that's what they are. They're really, they are tropes. They're basically, they're repeated tropes that aren't actually having really much of any effect on men at all. They're, people say them all the time, but it's not actually having any effect because it's not actually extending the length or thickness of his penis. And that's what's continuing on. Thus, he remains tormented because he's tormented by the lack of physical increase of length of thickness. He's not tormented by anywhere near as much by all these other factors that are just, you know, this noise in the world about it. It's it's the fact that he isn't able to actually have physically those extra inches of length and thickness. That's what's tormenting him, you know? So, and no matter what anyone says, it's always going to be tormenting him because he wants a different body. He wants a different organ, right? Or if he satisfied the rest of his body, what he specifically wants is a, is a different sized organ, right? For himself. So, There's nothing wrong with a man or weak or puny or pathetic or anything like this if he personally desires a longer, thicker organ. And personally, I consider it insulting to a man if if people are going to act like there's something wrong with him for desiring that or wanting that and just acting like, oh, it's because of porn you feel this way. You need to man up and get past that or whatever. Oh, it's because of women you feel this way. Therefore, you need to, you know, man up and hold on a minute. Wait a minute. That's very asinine to treat these men this way. Because indicating that their desire for a bigger size means that their that desire itself means they're not masculine, as if they're them having body insecurity by itself means they're not a real man or something. Come on, folks. And this is why I suggest quote unquote real men don't even see it that way towards their fellow man. They don't consider that the man having insecurities about this and genuinely desiring a bigger size is even something wrong with him at all. We don't see it that way. I don't. To me, it just makes rational sense. It's like, okay, if you want a bigger size, that's what you're wanting for yourself, and you're not having that, that makes total sense. It, it's, it's nothing at all that's um, non-masculine or weak or pathetic or puny. It's just 
you're desiring something you're being denied. And it's very understandable that that's pissing men off to no end. It pissed me the hell off too. You know, it would. So. You know, and like, that's the thing. It's like this, the perceptions of size are very much skewed in society. That's true. You know, that is a factor. Like in my case, I personally never even had a clue or thought at all remotely that I was considered big or large or would be because, you know, I went a huge chunk of my life without ever physically having intercourse with anyone or anything like that. And then by the time I did start having intercourse with females and they gave me the feedback that, wow, you're really big. You're the biggest I've ever had and all these types of statements or close to the biggest I've ever had or just like and or they said your size is perfect and all these types of things. And I heard these things very, very, very regularly. Um, I was like, wow, that's really interesting. I had no clue. I had no idea, you know? Uh, and so I was very pleasantly surprised by that feedback, you know? And that's why I don't make any claims. I just say that according to others, according to what I've heard, according to feedback, I, I don't claim stuff about myself. I'm just like, okay, according to people I've been with, according to the feedback I've gotten, this is what I'm getting reported back to me. So therefore it is what it is, you know, just like people being considered alpha or sigma or all this stuff. It's what people th are thinking of somebody else. So, okay. According to these people, they think I'm an alpha. According to these people, they think I'm a sigma. According to these people who dislike me, they think I'm a beta and you know, all these types of things. So you get the idea, you get the drift, you know, the gist of it. And uh, so in that regards, it is somewhat subjective, but, uh, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? So, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, the, the perceptions of size and stuff are vastly skewed to the point where men who are actually not at all even within the average range, think they're only average in size, you know, uh, who are well above average and considered large, think they're only average sized. And I think that was probably the situation I was running into. I assumed I was an av average in size. And that annoyed me to a certain extent because I wanted to stand out and be recognized as large. And so when I did get the feedback that that was the case in other people's minds, I was like, wow. That gave me a lot of mental relief and stuff like that. But it just shows that how bad the situation is. So even me, who is bothered by that, you know, and had that perception of myself, holy shit. What about the men who are actually getting feedback that they're too small? The feedback that they're not touching the back wall, that they're insufficient, all these other types of things, that they're inadequate. What about men who are actually getting that verbal kind of feedback and people are talking about them behind their back and laughing and jesting and jeering? And women being dishonest with them and all this stuff, you know, holy shit. If guys who are already large or big or considered that by others see themselves as only average in size. And in that particular context, I would say porn does have a lot to do with the skewed uh, perception of how one sees themselves, you know, no matter what size they are. I think it, uh, it skews the perception very absurdly very bizarrely because past a certain threshold or at a certain threshold at a certain point everything within the large or big range it's it becomes redundant at a certain point being longer or thicker than that because it's not even what the vast majority of women prefer anyway at a certain threshold um you know and even pe women who are considered size queens they'll still oftentimes prefer penises that are big but not too big you know and I, and stuff like that. Right. So there's basically like a sweet spot you could say within size where at a certain point it's other than in pornography, it's, it's considered too big, like legitimately. So, and it's not even desired by most women most of the time, but there's a sweet spot where it's desired by women physically in real life. And also considered a big penis in porn, both that's basically called the sweet spot, right? in quotations, obviously, because there's nothing sweet about it for a man suffering in agony over not specifically having that size or wanting that size, but being denied it. Right. Um, you could say the, uh, the social approval 
ego stroked size, you could say. Let's put it that way. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. It's very important to keep this in mind, folks, because I, I've lost track of how many times I've run into this or seen this where immediately people always go back to the, just be yourself, man up, embrace yourself and all these types of things. It's like, well, that's only going to work and help be help a certain subset of men. There's plenty of men in the world who are manly, masculine and confident in all sorts of other ways, but genuinely don't have the brain chemistry or brain wiring to uh, look at it from that perspective in terms of processing it because their mindset is like, um, well, you're telling me to do something psychologically. My brain isn't capable of doing like if a person isn't accepting that aspect of themselves, like genuinely so, and they genuinely want a different size for their own reasons, personally, independent of porn and women and being told that to just, it's like you're, you're telling them to accept something that they're never able to accept about themselves, no matter what. I mean, they can artificially act like they accept it and just try to tune it out and go into la la land, you know, ranting and raving or whatever, as if they're, as if they do accept it and just hide and never say anything about it because they're surrounded by men who all they ever do is say man up and be tough and all this stuff. It's like, but it doesn't mean that they're actually accepting it though, just because they're trying to, you know, meet that behavior of men around them and, and try to look tough and appear confident and things like this. Right. Cause that's what the men approve of is okay. We approve of the man being confident and showing confidence in himself, et cetera, yada, yada. Um, and they don't approve of a man going on and on about why he's, you know, insecure about this and, and wants this to be fixed and adjust and stuff like that. But a lot of times these men, they don't go on and on about it. They just, it's going on in them silently and they need an outlet and a place to talk about it at least periodically. You know, it's not necessarily, it's going to be this thing that's chronically eating away at them at every waking hour per se. But in some men's cases, it is eating at them at every waking hour. And this contributes a lot to obesity, overeating, um, really just bad lifestyle habits and everything else, because it's just, it's always gnawing at the back of their brain. You know what I'm saying? Like a parasite that's never, that never goes away. And, um, yeah, it's, it's horrible that this is happening and that this, it's, it's horrible that this world exists and forces body parts and body types on you against your will, like that are not what you prefer or want in so many fucking cases, you know? That's really fucked up, folks. Because it is no fault of eat the individual person. It isn't, you know. If somebody desires a specific body type, they should be allowed to have that. And that's how it is in paradise states, you know. You're not denied the body type you desire or prefer. But here, it's completely fucked up. It's totally the opposite. In the absence of specific technologies, there's like almost no way to adjust that stuff outside of um, marginal means or highly risky means and dangerous means that cause damage in other ways. There is a safe way to increase the length and thickness using a, what's called the phallosand forte, which I'll talk about in my other video on supplements and things that I personally like to use. Um, that is medically proven to be a safe and effective method that for sure, in fact, actually does increase the length of thickness when used uh, consistently over a notable period of time. But depending on the man's physiological structure, he may notice results within, you know, three to four weeks or um, a handful of months, etc., of consistent use. So there's at least one that is safe and effective that I can confirm, in fact, has that effect. Um, but, you know, it's amazing how far we've gotten technologically to the point that... Um, we're still at the infancy of these things. It's, it's really incredible how we've had to get this far technologically just to even begin in earnest for real, increasing the length and thickness of the male organ at will. Right. And still there's a lot of involvement there that goes on. It's not just some click of the finger thing. Um, but it's kind of nuts. The fact that this wasn't like available to people just via some natural means in earlier history, you know, it's, it's kind of insane. Oh, there's so much involved there and such a simple ass fucking thing, you know, when you really think about it, um, almost like this world is designed to specifically fuck with people in that regards and add insult to injury on purpose in that regards, almost, you know, but it just feels like that, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's pretty nuts. And, uh, so yeah, you're extremely fucking 
lucky and relieved from a lot of fucking torment, folks. If you're already considered big or large by others, what, whatever size you consider yourself, even if you don't consider yourself large or whatever, but others do, you're in a position that is like way, way rare in this world compared to most people most of the time. Like that is not common for people to have that experience or that uh, feedback from others. It's not. The most common is that people do not have that acknowledgement or feedback or recognition. It's not occurring for most men most of the time. And so it's understandable why it's fucking with their heads because there is a very specific hormonal, mental, physiological thing that's extremely relaxing to the psychology when you have that kind of positive feedback from others. Okay. There is a very specific thing that occurs in the physiological brain, adrenal, testicular axis that, that goes on when that kind of approval and appreciation is taking place of your physical structure, right? So if that's lacking and that's not occurring from others and that type of affection is not being received or, or exuded from others to you, it's, it's very understandable why men who are not receiving that are suicidal, depressed as hell, and um, running into all sorts of health issues, life problems, insecurity issues, just shit that for the most part they can't talk about with other men because in the majority of forums online, the majority of men's communities that are supposedly supposedly trying to help men, they're just all going on and on in circles about, you know, embrace yourself, man up, you know, it's, 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 it's some variation of just man up, basically, you know, however elaborately you want to word it, just take, just just handle it, just take it, just man up, just fess up to it, just accept yourself. It's just, you know what I'm saying? And it, and for those types of men, it's just adding insult to injury. That's why they don't take part in those forums or those communities, because it's just like, well, they know exactly what they're going to hear. And it's them being told to have a psychology that they don't have. Just like it's the, it's here's, here's how to see it. It's the same thing as them being told to have a longer, thicker penis without being able to do that. Does that make sense? So their brain chemistry is wired in a certain way to where they can't see it that way. The way you're talking, like you need to man up and embrace yourself because of how they're wired internally, because they genuinely do desire longer, thicker size. And so when they hear that, it's the same thing as them being told you need to just have a longer, thicker penis. Now, do you see, you see what's going on here? You see why that's not effective anymore? Because you're just telling them within the emotional mental world to have a, to have an emotionally or mentally bigger penis, right? That's basically what you're saying by, by saying that, uh, even though they can't have a physical one, but it's, it's the same thing. You're, t you're just telling them to have an emotionally or mentally bigger penis than a physical one. And they're just like, that's not how my brain's wired. That's not how I'm structured internally. That's not doable, like for, for that particular man, right? So I hope this helps, folks. Please, I, I hope this helps you understand this more and why it's so important to actually ask if a man wants advice directly on this or not, or direct encouragement regarding his overall um, qualities or not regarding the subject, or if he just wants to be heard out and validated in his legitimate frustration. You know, because I think with these men, it's a lot more therapeutic for them to just be validated in their frustration and not have it automatically associated with porn or women or blamed on some other thing. Playing the blame game, right? Just hearing them out. It's like, hey, this guy has a legitimate concern. It's something that's legitimately bothering him. And it's something that he legitimately wants for himself. Hear the guy out. Let him speak his piece and validate that that's a valid fucking desire that he has. And not go on a spiel about, oh, it's because of porn, it's because of this and that and the other. No, just hear the guy out for fuck's sake. Let him speak. You know, validate his feelings for what they are. And don't demasculinize him by saying he needs to man up or embrace himself or whatever, because that only works on certain types of men of the types I talked about before. Men who are kind of on the marginal cusp of having an issue with it. And who, if you say something, it can kind of tilt them in that direction. 
right? Who have that psychology of um, tuning themselves out from that and basically just tuning themselves into all the mental, emotional stuff, the whole hype train stuff that's, that goes on in the NoFap, you know, getting all hyped up and things. Uh, those kinds of men. Yeah, that's those types of men will respond quite positively to that type of stuff. But even then, I think a lot of that is men just distracting themselves for a while until the nightmare comes back to haunt them again. You know, after they get out of the hype train and the huffy puffy stuff, once they're alone in their room again, it eventually creeps back, loops back around, you could say, to torment them again. Even after all, all that stuff, trying to be masculine, trying to embrace themselves, accepting themselves and everything. And that just loops back around and the torment kicks in again, you know? So I think even in those cases, men aren't necessarily being fully honest. They're just doing a show or display to other men so that other men think they are more manly or more confident or more valuable as a man or whatever it is, you know? So, so I think this is an unrecognized element of when people say toxic masculinity they're not only referring to things that are obviously abusive or directly cruel or mean. They're referring to this dynamic where in the world of men online and interpersonally, there's still a lot of this, you need to just man up thing going on. And that in and of itself is fucking with men's heads. And it, it's, it's causing emotional turmoil to many men that is directly, even though the intentions of other men may be well-meaning, well-intended, they're trying to genuinely uplift their man and they genuinely do respect him. It's backfiring because they're not understanding that individual man's temperament. They're thinking that what will have a positive effect and what might have a positive effect on them personally, individually automatically needs to have the same effect on this guy or will, or there's something wrong with him or equals he's been demasculinized by women or equals he's completely caved to porn tropes or something. You know, it's, it's like they, they add this additional narrative to why the man is experiencing those insecurities. So the term toxic masculinity is, it's not only referring to these SJW, you know, tropes that are just, that are referring to anything that's actually masculine as toxic in this just completely exaggerated over the top sense. It's also referring to uh, this dynamic of, it's, it's kind of like a, a form of emotional bullying to these types of men, but it's, it's not recognized as such by most men most of the time where it's like, men being pressured to man up and embrace themselves for their physiology, for who they are, for their masculinity in every other way. Right. And also in that way, specifically in whatever way they can see it as masculine, you know, and, but the thing is, it's it, all these subsets of men who are tormented by that stuff and not helped by it. They're, they're being fucked up even more by that. Whereas men are thinking they're well-intentioned, thinking they're hel helping all their fellow men, what they're doing is actually backfiring and causing these men to be more tormented, not helped, you see? So it's sort of like an inadvertent um, harm that's taking place. That it seems to be a blind spot in a lot of men who are trying to do the, um, trying to help other men out and stuff like that online and on their content. It's, it seems to be a blind spot that might arise sometimes, you know, in notable ways where, you know, if the narrative is always, oh, it's because of porn or women that you're feeling this way, even though it's really not, those are just contributors in most cases, then it's not, it's not going to be in fully honest narrative and it's not acknowledging the man's actual feelings or considering the type of wiring he has emotionally or mentally, right? That may not be the type you have as a content producer or I have or anyone else has, you know? So we shouldn't assume someone else has the same psychology we have towards any of these things under any circumstances. We should rather wait for people to individually let us know if they want to contact us privately or talk about the subject directly, publicly or whatever, how they personally directly feel about it first. And if they want advice about it, you know, and what type of advice they want or not. Okay. Very important. Just like with women, you, you always want to ask, Hey, do you want me to just, do you want my advice or do you want me to just listen? If there's like, if they're going on a spiel about, you know, struggles at work or things going on and stuff, you ask, would you like my advice or would you like me to just listen? And then we'll specify which one. I just want you to listen or I, I want your advice, right? It's always good to ask and find out first. Because a lot of people just want to vent. They just want to say what they're feeling and let their raw emotions out and be heard and validated in 
the legitimacy of those raw emotions. Okay. So I hope this helps and I hope this inspires you to help your fellow men and women and especially your fellow man in this regards to just hear him out when he says what's getting to him, what he desires for himself. And the fact that he's really, what he's just looking for is just validation that his feelings are themselves valid. You know, he's not wanting to hear, Oh, it's because of porn or other women. And that may not actually be the case in his case. He's not wanting to hear any type of other advice or anything. He's just wanting to be heard out by another man. Yes, brother, your feelings and your emotions on this are, 100% valid and legitimate. You desire a specific size for yourself that you're denied via this world. And there's nothing wrong with you for having that desire. It's totally understandable. Makes total sense. You're still a cool, awesome dude in my book. I 100% get it, man. Makes total fucking sense to me. Let's hang out next weekend. You know what I'm saying? That kind of a dynamic. That's what I'm talking about, dude. No judgment, no finger pointing, no, hey, you need to do this. You need to man up. You need to do anything at all. Just... Yeah, man. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. I definitely get it. You know, you deserve to have the body type you want and it's being denied to you. That's fucking disgusting. It's horrible. That's one of the shitty elements of this reality. It's fucked up. I'm on your side. I'm on the same page as that reality should be structured differently. And, you know, I got your back. That's, that's what they're wanting to hear, man. You know what I'm saying? Not and wanting to know that it's genuine, not just you saying that, right? And uh, yeah. So with that, if you find this topic interesting and want to talk with me about it face to face, feel free to contact me at gnosticantinatalist at gmail dot com or any other topics on the channel. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. <laughs>